Hello everyone. It is Thursday the 12th and I will be releasing this tomorrow on Friday the 13th. Welcome to my weekly podcast. Astro Podcast is produced by Power Boots, LLC. And is filmed in Studio Cloud 9. Jody Sharami of Astro Podcasts. And I want to thank you and show gratitude. Gratitude to all the people in my life since I was born that have come in. Been a teacher, a friend, everything. Everyone that comes into your life is here to help you learn and grow to who you are here to be. And I want to thank every one of you that have been here for me since I was born. Everyone knows who you are. All my friends, everyone that's come through my life has crossed paths with me. I want to say thank you for coming into my life and I appreciate you. And I hope that everyone is doing well. And since the last time I was here... I mentioned that this week was going to get hot, 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 and it really has gotten hot, 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 hasn't it? Last Saturday, we woke up to another war. Um, This time, it's a war that goes back as far back as you can imagine, a long time ago. Uh, The same issues that haven't been resolved. Um, as Pluto woke up last week and is now stationed direct, meaning it is back to the degrees it was when it first went to sleep. It's back and it's reminding us of where it was here before. And Pluto is power, raw, raw power that comes into your life wherever it comes into your chart. It is the power that to destroy and rebuild or to fix and rebuild. It gives you energy, personal inner energy, and to the collective, it gives energy. And as you can see, it woke up and it is now in a T-square. They call it a T-square. Um, and it's forming a yod. And the reason this is important is that the way it is T-squaring the nodes of fate, which are the moon, and right now the nodes, the north node is in Aries, and the south node is in Libra. And Pluto is having a meeting with them to where we collectively are readjusting our value system. And what does that mean? It means exactly like it sounds like we've been talking about for this past two years that I started podcasting. One of the reasons why I started podcasting was this, is that the collective will never be at these degrees again because it doesn't come back here again until 248 years from now. Pluto, at this choice point of 27 degrees of Capricorn, where it is awake and it is slowly moving back into Aquarius by the end of the year. And it's very exciting. It could be fearful. Um, The downside of Pluto here is the power can be so intense and it's hitting the north and south node. It's making aspects with it the whole time that the nodes of fate are here in Aries and Libra. And again, it's about peace and war. And again, we see that the two opposite coins of unity is peace and war. And I want to say that I feel these tensions in the world. And I wouldn't say I'm hiding out. I'm more as the outer planets are still resting. um, And I'm ruled by the outer planets a lot more. I, I need to rest before they start waking up. And so I suggest that whenever you get a chance, take a rest, take a breather. Um, try to be by yourself and listen to your breath. Six seconds in, six seconds out. Let your breath in, let your breath out. Pay attention to your belly. See it rising, falling back. 
And really, if you can do that again for 10 seconds, which would be five seconds in, five seconds out. If you have more time, 12 seconds, six seconds in, six seconds out, right? So it's going to become even more important to meditate as time goes on. And meditation is a chance to be alone. And it doesn't mean you're just sitting there breathing in and out. You can meditate by staring at memes, uh, gardening, riding your bike, jogging. And congratulations to all the young people out there that ran in the marathon and the older people too. But I just know a couple of the younger ones ran this past weekend. And I want to say congratulations. That is an inner milestone there when you can challenge your body and your mind to be able to focus on that and how to how to outthink the pain how to breathe in the pain breathe out the pain and that is something that a lot of um, people that have had surgery or any type of situation with their body knows that breathing in and breathing out is the best way to heal and survive and have a great operation or whatever it is you're doing so very very nice I love to see young people being able to do that um, because it shows a sense of dedication and and being able to handle the pain in your body, which is difficult. But most of it is mental. So here we go again with Pluto moving. It is mental energy. But collectively, Pluto has come in and really shined a light on all the things that were hidden hidden away as he, as she, as Pluto starts to move out of the last degrees of Capricorn for the rest of the year. We will be seeing a bunch more things being exposed as Pluto continues to move and having aspects to Libra, South Node, and the North Node in Aries. So the war that is occurred in Israel is like any war no one wins in a war there is no winner there is no loser everyone feels the same pain the same anger the same need to lash out and that's why I meditate and, and maintain my inner equilibrium because I'm not perfect and I am fighting anger or whatever it is that I might feel um, that my mind can conjure up at that moment. And lashing out, vengeance, all these things come to your mind quickly like this. And you want them to go out of your mind quickly like that. You want them to run through your body. Go ahead. Feel it. Feel it. Release it. Release it. Now some people can get through that and help other people do it. But a lot of times, if you have had history with these people, like family or friends or whatever it is, a lot of times you'll get to a certain spot and the wall will go up. And when that happens, especially during this time, you have to think, why is it happening now? And what is it telling me? Sometimes your karma with someone has run out. Whatever it is you feel your karma with that person is, it has run out. And the universe is shutting the door on that. And that's when you have to learn to let things go. And that's when having a mutable sign will really help you. Mutable signs are Gemini, Virgo, Pisces, um, and Sagittarius is also mutable. And the mutable signs always end a season. Gemini ends springtime. Right? So you have to shift from here to here. And then what ends summer? Virgo ends summer season. And you mentally have to shift and start preparing for the winter. So you have to be flexible. And then in the, uh, in the fall, it is um, Sagittarius that shifts into winter. 
you start to feel winter december 21st and then you head into capricorn season so in the winter time you have to be able to shift you have to be able to go from outside living and indoors living if you live in a cold climate or you have to pay attention to the heat or whatever it is you have to deal with you have to shift and pisces ends winter where everything is decay and rotting and underground and you can't see the decay but you can see it when everything starts to thaw out in the winter time or you start to see new seeds sprouting and that happens in march at the end of pisces season march 21st march 22nd then you go into aries and you go into spring again and you start all over so without the without the mutable signs it would be very difficult for us to transition back and forth and people that are fixed signs have a difficult time and right now we are in the cardinal signs of aries and libra as our nodes of destiny and with that in mind this is a cardinal sign and pluto is in another cardinal sign capricorn and this cardinal sign of capricorn being in Pluto being in Capricorn is showing us leadership. Is our leadership what we hope? Can we change it? Can we shake it up from the ground up? So right now there's no house speaker and that's the third person in line to be president if something happens to the president and the vice president. So there's a lot of people trying to be house speaker. And right now the Republicans have the upper hand in terms of who they can choose to fill that spot. So they've got it down to one person. But I really think that it's going to be a situation where because of the astrology that I've seen for a couple of years now, that there could be a coup where the house speaker comes in and takes over. Um, because without the House votes, a lot of things don't move around in the government. And so I think that will lead to a shutdown of the government in terms of uh, there is no money for anything. And maybe the military will have to come in and quill the political parties. So the war in Israel all leads to that, is that religion during the age of Pisces has been a situation where um, I understand this because my moon's in Pisces. It's a situation where you have ideals and dreams and you want to make them practical in the real world. And so when you want to bring spirituality into the world, you want to do it in a kind manner. And the, again, the opposite side of Libra, the kindness and the diplomat and the doorway into spirituality, the opposite sign is war. So people can use the low side of that and go to war, or they can use the high side of that and be independent and forge their own way with a religion that they deem what they want, right? So where does it all fall apart? It falls apart when the ego, which is ruled by Mars and Aries and Leo, and Sagittarius, all the fire signs kind of represent the ego, right? So when it all goes bat to bat, you know, um, the fire will come in and purify everything. And that's what we're seeing now in bombs. They are using that as a man-made purification. And you see um, there's all kinds of things happening in the world. There was two earthquakes, um, and now the people in Maui are upset about um, tourists coming in because they haven't had time to process their loss yet. They're still suffering from TTSD. So all these things are happening and you can get kind of confused and off track and lose track of what you're doing. Just remember to focus on what your dreams are, especially if your dreams are to help other people and you are a light worker. You will be tested. You will have people coming at you um, asking what it's all about. No one cares, right? So the fact that anyone is saying anything, it means that they care. It means that they want to understand. 
they may not know how to express what they're feeling. So, right now the moon is in Libra on Thursday, and tomorrow it's still be in Libra. And then, on Saturday, this occurs. And this is the annular solar eclipse, where the moon is now the opposite of a supermoon. It is as far away from Earth as it can get. And it comes in front of the sun. And it looks like this. It doesn't quite cover the sun because it's too little. So you're going to get a ring around the moon. And it's very, very prophetic. It is at the nodes of fate. At a certain degree. It is a point where we are collectively being forced to look at the dark side of the moon which is our emotions that we've repressed that we don't want to deal with and they're bubbling up bubbling up with pluto they're everything's bubbling up the government everything institutions of marriage of family families and institution institution of religion institutions are coming against personal power so when I talk about the institution of family, I mean the nucleus of the family and what we have been raised to believe a good family is and how you don't want to be dysfunctional. So you have to do certain things to keep up with other people. So you got to put those pictures up. You got to do those things. You got to say things are good. You got to talk about it, right? You got to tell everyone, this is what's happening. This is what's going on. I'm doing so good, right? So. These are, these are a lot of times ways of, of feeling good about yourself, like an Aries and feeling, yes, I'm good, I'm good. And all that is great, 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 right? So when you go to enact it and you talk to someone that you think, you know, you have moved on, you know, you don't feel these things anymore because maybe you have personally worked through the trauma of your inner child, of your parents, whatever they did to you, because parents are the first to be the abusers. So, and they have total reign in the house. It's very difficult to tell on a parent, as you can see with the whole Jody mess out there in um, Utah, with the children that were had duct tape on them, just not getting food. You know, when you withhold food, it's just really cruel, right? So these are all things that people are gur gurgling, gurgling up, tickling the back of their brain. It needs to be spoken. It needs to come out. Because whatever Libra is, is an air sign. It's a sign of communication through Venus. And Venus right now is in Virgo. So we're being very choosy about what we say or... We're saying things that are very, very critical and hardcore and rude because Libra is about communicating. And with Pluto there, Pluto going to your mind is all bubbling up. The little child comes back out. And it's difficult to deal with that if you're the person that's getting regurgitated on. It's difficult. And then, and then you... You know, you have your issues too. So, you know, things things happen and then boom, there's all kinds of missiles and hostages being taken and there's no way to work through it. Um, the deal fell through for Israel and Saudi Arabia with President Biden trying to make that happen when they denied the, the PLO's, uh, their... Thing that they wanted to have done to the peace to the agreement they were trying to make that's when the bombs flew into Israel and so there's all these things about being a bully and when you retaliate against a bully you're usually the bad person and that goes in history goes everywhere every day every day so not all the time when you look at a situation can you understand it um, unless Unless you really have thought about it and read a bunch of things and seen every point of view and 
mix and meld it and try to make sense of it, which astrologers try to do. We try to make sense of it. And then when we look at the chart, it's so obvious what's going on. And, um, and as much as you can tell people, just like your own children, just like your parents, just like yourself, you have to every day practice these peaceful skills that you're trying to achieve. It's a practice. It's not something you just say, well, I'm good and I can handle it now. It's been years, thousands of years, and things are still rubbing people the wrong way. So, as this annular solar eclipse occurs, the sun will put a ring around the dark and light it up for you to see what is seeping through on this outer rim. That's fire out here. What's seeping through that you're in denial about? And for some people, you could have been working on it for a long time. And you see that it's not going to pan out. And you either start a war or you egg on a war. Either way, the processing of the information has now turned into a stalemate. There is a hung, jur, hung jury. And when you have a hung jury, there is no guilty party. There is the defendant's not guilty, and the other person has no, has doesn't have enough evidence to say this person is bad and guilty. So that's why history is so important. And you look back, 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 back. And, and you don't just read the history that you're given. You search out history from other cultures and what they say and what they do and how they feel. And a lot of times you will see that over time as the population grew, there's still only so many types of personalities and so many types of people that eventually start wars. And you can see from a long way away who they are. So peace to everyone. Um, stay mindful. Uh, definitely meditate. And for the annular solar moon, it is a new moon in Libra with the sun in Libra. And it makes a connection to Saturn and Neptune where we are being asked to see while Saturn is in Neptune, see the way that the law, the way that you can have everyday life, how it can change and shift to help you get into the age of Aquarius in an understanding of where you fit into the fabric of life because we're all here for a purpose. We're all here for a reason. We're here to help, help each other have exchanges and we need to learn gratitude by learning from these other people. We need to see that what we think isn't always what other people think and that's okay. I don't want to hurt you because you'll think differently than me. I don't want you to hurt me either, right? So that's how you have to move on and live in peace and understand that there's going to always be bad people and always good people in all walks of life in all faiths so i think that as we leave the age of pisces and go into the age of aquarius we need to release religion we need to release religion not spirituality not faith not belief in a higher purpose but we need to get rid of this whole idea that the way i believe the way you believe about my faith how i believe there's something out there than me other than us shouldn't really make you so angry that you want to hurt me so that's why religion has gotten twisted and turned and used to scam people that want so badly to have peace and love and joy. It's a way of grifting you. And I'm not saying all religious people are bad. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that over time, history has shown 
that a lot of killing has been done in the name of religion. And as right now, one of those wars is about religion, is what they're saying. So, and the other war is about territory and control and power. So, these are the things we have to work through, and it's always going to be with us. It's never going to go away. We're not going to be able to fight on another planet and live alone in our little community, just like people try to do in America when they came here escaping uh, religious persecution. So, this is a point, a very powerful point in history. And you want to be on the right side of history. You want to really forgive, let go, release. And also when someone releases you, you need to feel grateful that you had a chance to learn from that person. And you're happy that they were there for you during that time that you needed them. And these are things we must learn to let go of. Because as we heal the wounded child, which we all have, due to a lot of the way we are raised by society's standards, we all have trauma, all of us. So we need to heal, forgive, learn, and walk away. But still not be angry at other people. You have to release that anger. It doesn't do any good. I release my anger. It doesn't mean it doesn't well up in me a couple times a day for something who knows what. You know, and then I have to catch myself and go, oh my God, I recognize this pattern. I see what's going on. I need to be the person that releases this pattern. It's on me to release it. And so, and it's on you to release that pattern. Okay, so being in Capricorn, the sign of institutions, you could do very well if you work for an organization also. And Neptune's also going to get ready to get active in Pisces. And Saturn in Pisces is having a meeting with Venus in Virgo. They're opposite each other right now. So Venus is really trying to get stuff done. And Saturn is trying to say, because Saturn right now is being ruled by Neptune, who is also in Pisces. Saturn is trying to help shape and change the rules, but in such a way that it can help everyone. Because it's in a spiritual sign. So Saturn is giving off spiritual vibes and, and wanting us to be very spiritually in tune with what we're getting ready to do. So that's about it. It's a crazy week. I think I got everything in. Uh, Mars in Scorpio. Moon today in Libra. Uh, Venus is in Virgo. Pluto's in Capricorn awake. And then Saturn and Neptune are in Pisces. And they're having a meeting with Venus. So there's a lot of meetings and things happening. So it's a great time for creative people, artists. Uh, so go for it, okay? And Mars also today has moved into Scorpio. And that's where my Mars is. I, when I was born, Mars was in Scorpio. So Mars is very happy here. This is his second home out of Aries. And when they found Pluto, Pluto became the co-ruler of Mars. And Pluto is awake and saying stuff and doing stuff. And Mars is now home saying, hallelujah, I finally get some energy. Ooh, I can do some stuff, right? So Mars is very powerful in Scorpio. It really digs deep. It's a detective. It has an insatiable appetite for knowledge here in Scorpio. Mars also has no problems doing and saying the right things, whether it causes uh, pain or not. So you have to be very careful here with Mars energy. Uh, you can hurt yourself, hurt other people quite easily. And it's kind of like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type of situation where when you get consumed by Mars energy, you could go off on a tangent and just say everything you need to say and release. And again, let it go. Let it go through your body. Let it go through. Let it get in. Let it release. 
don't fight it the more you fight it the more angry you'll get and, and you don't want to get angrier with Mars here it is a deadly combination especially with Pluto Pluto now awake so really use that energy to exercise it's in my fourth house so I'm using it to clean up the house get ready for the holidays I have clothes laying everywhere uh, so I gotta take care of that um, I have suitcases still unpacked for my trips so these this is a good time to use Mars energy like that to make things practical and Mars is in the sign of Scorpio and Scorpio is a fixed sign so if you can fix your energy on something especially with Venus in Virgo you can really become great at organizing and having a plan and getting things together as the outer planets continue to wake up and they will be making things move quicker as they become awake um, because right now the personal planets are moving so quickly Mercury right now in Libra will be moving to Scorpio on the 22nd with the Sun on the 23rd into Scorpio and then the last days of October we're gonna have that other huge lunar eclipse that fate of nodal access Taurus and Scorpio we're finishing that off for the last time for a couple of years so this month is all about releasing closing that door even if you are having a hard time closing it work on it don't get angry and frustrated if you need to release something that is no longer working because the doors are shut people don't have an open mind or you're just done with that over with that you've worked through that you don't want to go back there these are the things that are happening in the world and personally uh, maybe you don't want your job anymore maybe you want to get divorced maybe you want to get married maybe it's the opposite maybe you want to start a family uh, maybe you're going to use this energy to help you get a job, a raise. So there's all kinds of good things to use these energies for. Because Virgo is very, very good at details and organization. And then Scorpio is very good at being single-minded and getting it done. I appreciate you and I'll be back next Friday, which will be the 20th. And then we'll be talking about the changing of the season into Scorpio. And also, I believe... We're getting ready to have Halloween and the eclipse all at the same time. And Friday the 13th, take it easy. Don't go crazy. Don't go looking for trouble. I wouldn't anyways. Take care and I appreciate you. Please subscribe, like.